They say technology always gets better. That progress is a straight line. That newer is always superior. But every gearhead knows the truth isn't that simple. Sometimes the past felt alive in a way modern engines struggle to match. Sometimes old school character makes newer tech feel clinical. And sometimes the way an engine connects you to the car, to the road, and to the machine itself defies any spreadsheet. This is the story of exactly that struggle. A conflict not of horsepower numbers, but of soul versus sophistication. On one side stands a legend, a roaring, naturally aspirated V8 that defined an era. A machine that didn't just make power, it made people feel something deeply, emotionally, viscerally. On the other side stands the modern interpretation, a turbocharged inline six that redefined what a performance engine could be. One engineered for balance, efficiency, torque everywhere, and a level of usability that older engines only dreamed of. This is the story of BMW's S65 V8 versus S58 inline six, and the question that haunts every BMW enthusiast did BMW actually improve? In the world of naturally aspirated performance engines, few names resonate like the BMW S65 V8. When the F8 XM3 slash M4 generation arrived in 2007, the automotive world was still in love with the purity of V8s. Sure, turbocharging was on the horizon, but nothing had yet fully replaced the emotional connection of a high-revving, naturally aspirated engine. BMW didn't just drop a V8 into an M3, they engineered a masterpiece. The S65 wasn't borrowed from another car. It wasn't a detuned truck engine. It was built from the ground up to rev hard, breathe freely, and reward every drop of revs with sound and character. It was a high-strung performer, pushing well past 8,000 revolutions per minute without hesitation. And it sounded like a mechanical opera. It was sharp, precise, and alive. Every gear shift felt like a statement. Every redline pull felt earned. Torque came alive high in the rev range. Power bled seamlessly between gears, and the engine demanded your attention in a way that modern turbos struggle to replicate. Driving an S65 M3 was more than just acceleration. It was participation. Every shift, every climb in the revs, every throttle blip told you you were in control of something thrillingly mechanical. But while enthusiasts fell in love with this engine's personality, it didn't come without challenges. Fuel economy was laughable by modern standards. Emissions compliance was difficult. And in an era when turbocharging was beginning to unlock insane power from smaller displacement engines, the S65's naturally aspirated song was becoming an increasingly expensive symphony. Still, when the S65 was introduced, it was one of the last great naturally aspirated performance engines, a swan song for a culture that revered mechanical purity. As global regulations tightened and performance expectations changed, automotive engineers found themselves chasing a new type of perfection. Peak power was no longer enough. Torque across the rev range mattered. Fuel economy mattered. Emissions mattered. And perhaps most importantly for the modern driver, daily usability mattered. Turbocharging presented a solution. Instant torque, efficient power production, smaller displacement engines making enormous power. And so, as the S65 era began to fade, BMW began work on what would become the B58 inline six, an engine that wasn't a replacement for the S65 in spirit, but a new philosophy entirely. Where the S65 was brute force and glory, the B58 was precision and balance. By the time the B58 debuted in 2015, the automotive landscape had shifted. BMW needed an engine that could be smooth, powerful, efficient, reliable, and compatible with the full range of modern demands, 
from daily commuting to fire-breathing performance. So they brought out an engine that few expected to become legendary in its own right. The B-58 is a 3-liter turbocharged inline-six, yes, but beneath those specifications is some serious engineering excellence. BMW didn't just add a turbo to an old design, they overhauled it. A closed deck block for durability, a forged crankshaft, an integrated water-to-air intercooler for cooler intake temps, all designed to reduce heat soak, increase longevity, and give boost in a way that felt smooth and natural, without brutal spikes or unnatural delivery. Where the S65 was flat-out thrilling, the B58 was intelligent. It wasn't just power for power's sake, it was power that behaved. The B58's stock figures, mid-300s to near 400 horsepower, don't tell the whole story. Once tuners get involved, a Stage 1 or Stage 2. B58 can easily eclipse 500 horsepower with supporting mods. Stage 3 builds are commonplace in the 600s, and unlike its older sibling, the B58 can haul that power with surprising reliability. Which brings us to the real difference between these two icons. Driving an S65 is like playing a finely tuned analog instrument. The feedback is direct. The revs climb without artifice. The engine yells, sings, and whispers in a way that makes your spine respond before your brain does. There's a reason people still lament the loss of naturally aspirated engines. They didn't just make power, they communicated. The B-58, meanwhile, is like a precision digital instrument. It is calculated, it is efficient, it is adaptable. The torque of delivery is friendlier. Boost comes earlier. It's easier to extract usable power without needing an aftermarket turbo kit or racing fuel. And on a daily basis, the B-58 is more refined, quieter, and more compatible with modern driving conditions. But in terms of emotional engagement, that's where opinions begin to diverge. Ask an enthusiast what makes the S65 special, and they'll talk about sound, redline behavior, and how the engine made them feel. Ask another what makes the B-58 impressive, and they'll talk about torque spread, tunability, and reliability. One is emotive, the other is efficient. Both are impressive, but they speak different languages. Let's talk numbers. The S65, being naturally aspirated, was tough to tune in the traditional sense. Maximizing its output generally meant individually engineered cam timing, head work, and sometimes forced induction conversions. These builds were expensive, bespoke, and required expert attention. In contrast, the B-58 thrives in the tuning world. ECU flashes, cold air intakes, upgraded downpipes, these bolt-ons alone give noticeable gains. It doesn't require replacing entire components to unlock meaningful power. And that's exactly why the B-58 has become such a darling among tuners. In stock trim, the B-58 is already strong and reliable. Modify it smartly, and 800 horsepower is very achievable. With forced induction upgrades and supporting fuel systems, 700 horsepower becomes a logical next step rather than a holy grail. The S65? Not so much. That's not to say the S65 can't be built for serious performance. It can. It's just much more involved. And that's where the question becomes deeper than which engine is better. Reliability is often where performance engines get exposed. High output is one thing, longevity is another. The S65, for all its glory, was known to be thirsty, exacting, and sometimes expensive to maintain. Valve train precision demanded meticulous care. High revs meant more stress. Because this was a naturally aspirated high revving V8, everything wore faster. Clutch life, valve guides, and carbon buildup were more than just rumors. They were real maintenance realities. The B-58, on the other hand, was built for this era. It was engineered to be robust under normal use and predictable under heavy tuning. Heat management, oiling systems, and direct injection were better understood, 
Everything about the B-58's design pointed toward structured reliability, not just peak performance. And for those who daily drive their performance BMWs, that matters. So let's finally ask the question at hand. Did BMW actually improve between the S65 and the B58? The simple answer is yes, but only if you define improvement not as emotional connection, but as engineering evolution. The S65 is a marvel of naturally aspirated engineering, a V8 that gave every cylinder its own voice and every rev its own story. It was a pure performance instrument, built in a world where turbocharging wasn't yet king. The B58, meanwhile, represents what happens when performance not only has to be fast, but also efficient, reliable, tunable, usable, and compliant with modern emissions and economy standards. The B58 doesn't replace the S65's soul. It reinterprets it. It trades raw emotion for usable performance. It trades visceral sound for controlled torque. It trades naturally aspirated purity for turbocharged precision. In other words, it improved from a technical perspective. But whether it improved from an emotional perspective, well, that's up to you. Some drive for numbers, some drive for feeling. Both engines deserve their place in BMW's history. Both engines changed the landscape of performance in their time. And both engines left legacies that enthusiasts will debate for generations. In the end, the BMW S65 and B58 are more than metal and pistons. They are statements of their time. The S65 is a proclamation of mechanical purity, raw revs, and analog connection. The B58 is a testament to engineering evolution, turbocharged optimization, and balanced performance. One says, feel every rev. The other says, control every moment. And maybe that's the real answer. The question isn't whether BMW improved. It's whether you value raw emotion more or intelligent engineering. Because in the world of engines, both matter. So what do you think? Is the S65 the last great naturally aspirated performance engine? Or has the B58 rewritten the meaning of modern performance? Tell me in the comments. And if you love deep emotional stories about automotive engineering and legendary engines, subscribe to Past Pistons, where we don't just talk about engines, we keep their stories alive one roar at a time.